So I thought it would be a good idea to, today to start winding down, maybe, on, on some of our Jurassic World Dominion coverage. As we, you know, we only have like a few episodes left before the film debuts. It's coming up really quick. Um, of course, you will hear the Jurassic Wire and, and the mailbag and things like that. But uh, I did want to get the perspective of a huge, 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 huge fan of, uh, of Star Wars. Uh, Ryan Donahoe, host of The Forecast. How are you, Ryan? Oh, you meant me? <laughs> yeah, you. I wanted to get the you know the perspective of a huge fan of something else completely. So, <laughs> no, no better coverage than a fan of a different franchise. Brad, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. On. I'm I'm glad I could have you on. I've been wanting to, and I actually checked back. Um, the last time we had an episode together on this podcast was two years ago. <laughs> I do. Literally, I remember. <laughs> literally 2020, and I, when I saw it, I was like, "Oh my god, I forgot." I actually thought about that episode the other day, but didn't think about who was on it with me. Sorry. Uh, no offense. Um, but I, I was like, that was a cool episode. That was fun. And then I saw it was you. And I was like, all right, there we go. It went, it went so well. You said, we'll do that again in two years. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, we've, we've talked so much with, you know, the, the, the big Jurassic fans in the community and stuff like that. So, I'm actually interested to hear what you think about this. And I actually asked you today, I was like, how much do you know about this? You got to know next to nothing, right? And you're like, well, actually, I listened to The Wire in the mailbag. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. So you know you know, maybe a decent amount about this. What we're, yeah. what, you call it Jurassic World Domingo. So where, where's your, where are you standing right now when it comes to Jurassic content? Well, when this, come, when this movie hits in August, I am going to be absolutely there on day one. It's August, right? Yeah, it's a definitely August. <laughs> Jurassic Park Domingo. Uh, I just can't wait. No, you know, I always think I saw, so you know, look, I, I listen to my my friend's shows. So, uh, you know, it. I always I, I'm I'm what you would what you would call the most hardcore casual Jurassic fan there is. I've got a story just like most hardcore Jurassic fans. I on the force cast, we actually just talked about. Uh, my Jurassic story. I told you I saw Fallen Kingdom five times in the theater. Um, I do More listen than me. to the- More than me. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, I-, I do listen to The Wire and the mailbag. I've actually called into the mailbag a few times. Um, but I always True. think I know a lot about Jurassic. And then I listen to the show and whether it be Tom or somebody else. And they're like the Dilaposaurus, you know, in Jurassic World Evolution also. But if you... In the original book, you know, there was a connection with InGen, but you have to look at Steven Johnson. I'm like, wait, who the hell is Steven Johnson? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and so I have to, uh, yeah, I have to have to kind of uh, put it in perspective. So I know a lot, probably more than like the average movie goer that probably saw a trailer for during Multiverse of Madness and goes, oh, there's another one of those. Oh, we, we got to see that. I'm, I'm further along than that, but I, okay, I definitely yeah. would say that I'm, I'm, uh, you know, you know, look, I, last time I was on air was two years ago. So what does that tell you? <laughs> it tells you, uh, I'm terrible at, at booking people to come on this show and I just stick with, Hey, uh, let's do the same thing we did last month. <laughs> <laughs> but your original question was what, what my, what, what I'm feeling right now heading. Yeah. Into what the are you movie? feeling? Yeah. I am, I am both very very excited and also very uh sad so i love seeing these movies in theaters in particular like the like even more than star wars i think star wars is best seen in the on the big screen but i've gotten so much small screen star wars now that like i you know it's i'm i've come to terms that that's almost just as good uh but for jurassic it's such an experience to see it in the theater and i'm so like not disconnected, but I'm not necessarily like they better do this, 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 and this like is when I head into star Wars, you know, it's like, I watch rise of Skywalker and I'm like smacking my head a few times going, why would you do that? We're here. (laughs) It's like, I don't know what's legitimately going to happen. Like dinosaurs are living among us. The guy on the scooter got eaten. Like what, how much of that is going to (laughs) happen in this movie? And at the end of it, how do you solve this? I, I think I, I texted you one time and I was like, Hey, dinosaurs are kind of roaming the earth. Maybe we should like get all the world governments together and maybe like do something about this. Nah, we'll just leave it to these eight randos that'll just take care of it. Um, 
And you know, you told me there's a whole nother storyline. So my my general thought is I'm so excited to see Jurassic in the theater again. I have no expectations uh, really of where I want to see them go because I legitimately don't know. But I'm also sad because you know, I, it, it, who knows when the next time we'll see live action on screen Jurassic. We have our hopes, but and, and it's such a cash cow. You know, Universal will go back to the well. It's just mm-hmm. when and if this movie ends in such a finite way. Will I, for the first time as a Jurassic fan, go, uh, I don't know how I'm feeling about this next direction. So it's such a mixed bag of emotions, but I, I can't wait to get into the theater and see Jurassic again. Yeah. I wonder if, um, you know, since we haven't had any kind of news, there's been no word. And usually we don't really get any kind of word until, you know, a few weeks after the film has come out. Um, I wonder if they'll take like the Star Wars approach and like say, hey, we're not making movies for a while. For many years, and then they'll just throw some stuff maybe on Peacock if they ever do get around to doing TV content. But I don't have faith in that. I don't know that they'll ever get around to doing that. And Peacock just doesn't really seem like the platform for it. You know, obviously Camp Cretaceous is on Netflix, but uh, with Universal and Comcast owning their own platform, you would think eventually it would get, something would get to Peacock. But you know, Star Wars has done some major, major scale stuff. Uh, you know, this past season of Boba Fett had a rancor in it that was just as believable, if not more so, than anything you've seen in a film. Uh, so if they can do that, we can get a dinosaur on TV, you know? Yeah. No, I, the the um, this is how big of a fan I am. The the, the short that we got on NBC, uh, mm-hmm. kind of. What, what was that called? Well, we got one uh, back in 2018, Battle at Big Rock, and then we got yes, to, uh, the, the prologue recently, yeah. That was 2018, Battle at Big Rock? 18 or 17, maybe, maybe maybe even earlier. Yeah. Maybe seven. Oh, wait. No. We got the movie in 18. All right. So maybe it was 19. Okay. Maybe it was okay. 19. I don't know. I feel like- Who knows? <laughs> but that was so awesome. I remember watching that. And then, yeah, I did watch the prologue as well. Uh, it definitely can translate to TV. But, you know, I, I just I hope for, for your sake, your listeners' sake, your audience, the Jurassic community, because I've said before, the Jurassic community from the outside, just an observer. Uh, I just watch you guys talk about Jurassic. I don't participate. Um, <laughs> it, it just seems like so cohesive because you're you're all sort of like happy when you get stuff. And, and there's there. And I could be wrong. I could be missing this giant civil war that I'm just not paying attention to. But it just seems like everyone is so excited about uh, the toy drops and the tie in material and the video games because you're so happy just to see content that i hope for your guys's sake they they go they don't make you just sit there and wait for five years and then they randomly announce something i hope they go ahead and go let's let's do this we're gonna they're gonna be a series on peacock or whatever whatever that's gonna be Mm -hmm. uh because i i want to see the franchise continue uh because it's so weird it's it's what what i what it makes me mad it makes me mad about this uh you talk about me what kind of fan i am it's like I get weirdly defensive of the Jurassic franchise because everybody's like, oh, another one of these. And yeah. then the box office comes out and it's like breaks every box office record of all time. So it's like, obviously, people want to see it. <laughs> uh, and so yeah. I, I just hope Jurassic and Universal, Universal understands how awesome this community is and that like it's not just you guys. Casual moviegoers love to see dinosaurs mm-hmm. eat people. Yeah, it is very, uh, very frustrating to see those comments all the time about, oh, great, another one. Who needs it? Why didn't they just learn from the first one? How many times could they possibly do this? You know, I'm like, each movie's been different. Let's let's give them some credit. Like each movie's been different. And, uh, you know, like you said, people go to see these movies. They make tons of money over it's, it's like universal's biggest one it might be one of the biggest franchises out there ever to make money so they're they're killing it um but uh i i do want to dive into some other things here because uh recently a bunch of clips came out um from a, a bunch of different uh you know actors and uh people that work on the movie and i want to see if we can dive into maybe some things that they've said and get some stuff out of them. And I, I want to see like what you know about these characters. So let's go into this first one here, which is from B.D. Wong. With a character like this that is known already, reintroducing this character and trying to tell some kind of story with him, his presence physically is important. And, it, and, and so what we've done is create a different version of the same person so that one can, and without saying a lot, understand somehow visually that 
a lot of time has passed and a lot of, um, there has been a change within him. He is hmm. a scientist, which I equate with kind of being like an artist in a corporate environment. And the corporate environment is mandating his actions and his uh, work. And this is the same, this is part of the <laughs> franchise really, that, that we re-examine that phenomenon of corporation versus science or art. Yeah, all right, so I love that. I wanna, I wanna know a lot about where uh, Dr. Wu's head is at currently. So Dr. Wu, uh, I think at the end of the last movie, I think he was just like knocked out and then like carried off screen. And then that was it. We don't know anything about where he's been. Um, but we saw in the trailers that it looks like he's kind of like under duress and kind of like sad and like depressed looking. So what do you think? Where's, what's the state of mind here? Uh, they're, they're mandating his work. They've changed his appearance. What, what's his thought process? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Dr. Henry Wu. Because um, it's like he, in in the old films you know it's like he played the, the, a major part in bringing this whole thing to to life and all this and you're kind of like oh there's the scientist aspect of it and then we kind of get reintroduced to him in jurassic world and he's kind of like well now i'm experimenting and then you get to fallen kingdom and even in camp crustaceous is like he's kind of a villain like he's kind of not that oh, yeah. like level scientist so you know in the trailers you've seen him basically kind of look he kind of looks like what have i done that i've mm -hmm. seen uh, you talk about you know his work being mandated. He's got the long hair. They're trying to make sure that they know that time has passed. I'm my guess for for Doctor Wu and listening to that clip. I haven't seen any of these clips, so it's going to be interesting to see what he's talking about. But my my feeling towards him is I don't like him right now. Like which is weird because I've always kind of liked liked him in the first first film. But uh, I I'm I I don't think there's a redemption story here so much as like a forced redemption story. Like I kind of feel like. Mm the heroes if you want to call them the the random eight people that i named that just somehow saved the world are going to go to him <laughs> and be like like you helped start this and you kind of you know you were kind of involved in the whole selling part like all these things that led to this moment you, you, you know yes claire pushed the button but like okay you kind of basically guided us to this point you're going to get us out of this and then i i, I think i predict a very sad ending for this character like i predict he almost gets eaten or something after helping. Like I, I, for some reason, I just don't just, if you just look at him and listen, if you listen to that interview, he doesn't sound very happy. I just kind of think this is going to be kind of like yeah. a do the right thing and then also die. Well, I, I, you know, I honestly feel bad about, um, well, I, I just the character and BD Wong himself. Like he's come out so much and said how like, he was undervalued, you know, in the first movie and they, you know, they didn't do anything with that character. And, he, you know, he's wondering if it was maybe a race issue or something like that, you know, back in the 90s. And and then he gets his, you know, his due in Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom. And now here he is in what could be his last movie. And all we're doing is focusing on, you know, Sam Neill, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum and no focus whatsoever on this sad guy over here. You know, I feel bad. I feel so bad. I want him to be at the forefront of all this as well. Um, so I hope there's a redemption in there for him. I really do. I don't know. I think there will. I do too. It just, it just seems like in the trailer, at least he didn't. I mean, when you saw the part where he was in the trailer, it certainly didn't seem like he was like, <laughs> "Let's do this." Everyone else, like, he no. kind of looks. I can't remember the exact line, but he kind of looks up to somebody and is kind of like, "You kind of don't understand what we're dealing with here." And he doesn't seem happy about it. Like he's it like, like uh, we need to correct the mistakes or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. I'm interested to see where he goes, and I, I appreciate his uh, science as art, you know, kind of commentary and and how that how do you do that within the corporate structure? So I think it's pretty interesting. But uh, let's move on to somebody who um, has has become a huge part of the Star Wars franchise, and um, uh, this is Bryce Dallas Howard. See what she says. There have never been more dinosaurs than there are in Dominion in a movie. <laughs> like mo maximum amount of dinosaurs in this movie that we're making. Because there is proliferation and because the dinosaurs are everywhere, um, you see dinosaurs in snow. You see dinosaurs in cities. Cool. 
there are more <laughs> characters, because there are more set pieces, because there are more dinosaurs. There's uh, there's a a larger tapestry that that Colin is creating for us as an audience, and it's really exciting because it's new. It feels really fresh. Like you haven't seen Jurassic like this ever before. She's okay. like Han Solo, you know? Like she's she's <laughs> this pilot, um, you know, ex-military. Talking about Kayla. Uh, okay. Just Thought a I missed something. boss. <laughs> has gotten into some shady business. Um, and... And that's the moment in which, you know, uh, Claire, Claire and Owen and, and Kayla's story intersects. Huh. Jurassic is a very pro-female franchise. If you think about it, as it started, all the dinosaurs were women. <laughs> they were women. <laughs> all the dinosaurs <laughs> were female. Um, and, um, and they're inherent in that they're, there's sort of the... Um, the idealization of that female strength, female power. Okay. Um, there's a lot to take in there. Um, not so much in the beginning, but um, more dinosaurs. Yeah, we get that. There's a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff going on in these trailers. Haven't seen Jurassic like this ever before. That's a nice, interesting comment. I feel like that's something, though, that anybody would say for any new movie. Um, the interesting stuff, though, is that uh, the talk of like Kayla, who's the the new pilot in this movie. You see her flying that big plane that gets attacked. Um, she's a little bit like Han Solo. She's into some shady business. I think that's pretty cool. I I, uh, I, I well, we'll learn more in a little bit, but uh, that's cool. And I I'm so excited for the future of of whatever Bryce does. You know, I want her to direct, direct Jurassic. You know, but you guys got her on lock over there on Star Wars. Is she doing Ahsoka too? I think she is, right? Well, she kind of let it slip that that uh, Clone Wars fans will be happy with what they're doing on Ahsoka. And it's like, so either she's privy to some some things just because she's part of the family or she's getting scripts because she's going to direct. Um, Hopefully. But they're, they're big fans of her. They gave her basically the second biggest episode of Book of Boba Fett. Um, so they're, they're big fans of her, which she's one of my favorite people out there in the industry. Um, so, you know... Her, what's weird is we didn't actually hear her talk about her character much no. at all. <laughs> uh, but yet hers, yeah. her, she has probably the biggest moral dilemma in the entire movie, at least coming in, right? Because she's the one that, that did. She's the one that did it. She's the one that pushed the button. Um, well, you know, no, we, that would be the, the, the girl Maisie. She, she's the one. Claire was like, I don't know. And then Maisie's like, yep, I'll hit that button. <laughs> Yeah, I guess technically Maisie did hit the button, but um, mm, just because Bryce in general got him into this this mess because yeah. um, she undiscovered the plot. And I remember distinctly she yelling, it was all a lie because I saw it in the trailer 500 times. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I just well, think she's, she's the most like got to be one of the most conflicted characters because we've seen she's actually the one that has one of the biggest arcs i think of the new oh, trilogy for sure yeah i like, don't know if it works 100 oh, okay. but i i'm i'm interested to see what happens from here on out and and you mentioned that she didn't really talk much about her character um yeah i don't i don't know what's going on with these characters like you were saying earlier it's like we don't know what's going to happen like i don't know what's going to happen at the end of this movie like who's going to be left where are these people going to be I don't know, but one piece, one person I do want to know what you know about is, uh, you know, the beginning of Jurassic Park. Dennis Nedry goes to that cafe and he gets that he gets the Barbasol can. He gets it and puts that shaving cream on somebody's apple pie or whatever. Um, what uh, or cherry pie? What I don't know what kind of pie it was. Does it matter? No. Um, what What do you know about Dodgson? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Yes. yes. Right. That's the point. So I, I like that as a, um, you know, a, a general, you know, the general audience out there has no clue really who Dodgson is outside of Nedry going like, Dodgson, we got Dodgson here. And he's in even, the, he's in the film, this one, He's right? He's no. in this movie now. And now it's a different actor. Um, lots of bad things happened uh, from the other actor. So we won't talk about that. But a uh, new, brand new actor, Campbell Scott plays Dodgson. And uh, there's a lot of uh, cool stuff to, to, you know, learn about this character. Of course, we have 
you know, the books, he was a big character in the novels, and they talked all about where he's from and what he does. Um, but the movies never showed that. So I'm interested to see how they're going to plot that out for people to actually understand who this guy is. So let's take a quick listen here to Campbell Scott. He's got some fun things to say. Obviously, I went and looked uh, 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 at some of the things, what people were saying about him. And a lot of the stuff was, interestingly, about the books and even people uh, who had written comments from, from the first movie, you know, how, if Dodgson ever comes back, how we'll be involved. You know, there are, there are kind of, uh, I guess you'd say, sort of archetypal things that happen uh, in the first movie, mostly to do with, uh, 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 that involve Dodgson, but mostly that have to do with Wayne Knight's character and uh, his death and, and people remember how they smuggled the dinosaurs and things like that, uh, the dinosaur embryos. And, and so I think people are, it certainly seems like people are interested, like how are they gonna work them in? How are they gonna, um, and Colin and Emily and everybody have done a pretty amazing job of both hopefully satisfying uh, uh, that curiosity, but also making something you, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen before. I'm so interested that he's Lewis here. Lewis Dodson is, awesome. is um, uh, as we as we say from from the earlier uh, from the books and from the earlier film, and he still he still is that person. Um, he uh, InGen was the original company that was working on the the dinosaurs and, and funded by by uh, Attenborough's character and and uh, Jamie Cromwell's character from from later on. Um, uh, had a rival company in the books, Biosyn, and that is, uh, and Lewis uh, worked for them, and uh, he is now become the CEO or the the man who runs that that company. Uh, they are a um, uh, genetic research science company, uh, but they've always a little little less like uh, a little less than InGen. They've uh, operated kind of on the shady side of things. <clears throat> and uh, certainly in the books, I mean, Lewis is, is uh, he will basically stop at nothing to kind of, you know, get information, steal information, you know, <laughs> get it from wherever uh, he can. I I love that he mentioned the books and, and stuff and that he is, he still is that person that we know from the first movie and the books, which is, he is a slimy, like nasty guy who's, you know, doesn't matter if people live or die. He's just a terrible person. So now he's the CEO of a company looking like uh, Tim Cook over here uh, from Apple. And <laughs> we've made jokes about their that, that building that they have out in the woods looks like the Apple headquarters. Um, so I, I, I think it's pretty awesome. It sounds like he looked up comments about, like, what people maybe in the fandom or wherever thought about, like, Dodgson and where, where he would be if he ever returned. So... That's pretty interesting. Uh, are you looking forward to seeing this character expand at all? You know, not knowing yeah, much about him? I think this is the Lando of episode nine. Like, it, th this is, like, I think, it, he's not as well known as Lando, obviously, but I think <laughs> Colin and Emily, I think, had to have said, how do we, because if this ends at all, you want to do the thing of how do you take the beginning and make this big circle and make it all tie in and I, I my guess mm -hmm. is emily and and colin probably watched the original movies a million times and like what storylines were never really addressed or ended right because he talks about wayne knight like death like yeah like that that was what people remember about that scene in the in the can it wasn't it wasn't him you know like it no. wasn't dots <laughs> like, no one no one thought about that and so i think this is one of those things where it's like i could see them watching it and go what happened to that guy what who you know, then they start going into the books and they start going into the lore and they realize we can use it because it was never touched again. He wasn't in Jurassic Park two or three. Right. I don't know. I don't no. think so. No, nope. uh, he wasn't in Jurassic World. He wasn't in Camp Crystal. Like, so this this is our in. And I think it's sort of like same thing with episode nine. It's like, how do we get our heroes to get in with what they were doing in the earlier movies? We haven't seen Lando. Let's bring him back. This is how we tie it in. So I think he's going to I think. The reason why the Barbasol can is back, and we're under the assumption that it's back, right? Somehow it's it's going to tie like, in. Seems like it'll be back in some capacity. Yeah, I think that's going to be the way for the general audience to go. That's who that guy is. Because, like me, I, to be honest with you, if we wouldn't talk about this, I wouldn't even thought twice about about Dodgson. Um, like <laughs> it would have taken yeah. took me a minute to go. Oh, but how do they do? Yeah. Everyone knows the Barbasol can, so let's use that to show that this was actually the guy that was the other half of that meeting. Uh, and the and the whole reason the Barbasol can kind of came to be, 
And then I think he's going to play the Lando role where it's like, he may not be like some massive part of this film, but he's an important part to tie it into um, Mm -hmm. sort of what, you know, how this whole thing got started. Yeah. Yeah. And actually that's a pretty interesting point. I I have a lot of clips. I'm going to skip a a bunch of them and I'm just going to end up playing them because they don't really have a lot of pertinent information, but uh, this next one kind of ties into what you were talking about from the beginning. So let's, let's go to Colin here. Hear what Colin Trevorrow, the director, has to say. Duel the Fates? The most important decision <laughs> that any of us made was that we were going to take these characters who we love and thrust them into a new adventure and send them into danger yet again. Uh, they weren't going to be observing this from afar. Uh, they were going to be engaged from the very beginning. Uh, the plot actually is driven by Ellie's story and by Grant's story. In this film, even though uh, we have more animatronics than ever, we have more dinosaur species than ever, uh, every time you see one, I I hope that that is a a moment of wonder, a unique moment of wonder unto itself. If a new dinosaur is coming into the film, it's going to get a hero's entrance, just like the actors Hmm. do. Hero's entrance. I love the idea that the kind of of adventurer that would exist in a world in which dinosaurs uh, and humans uh, both walk the earth... uh, that was a new character I haven't seen before. And we got to create her from scratch. And so Kayla Watts is a cargo pilot who flies dinosaurs all around the world and, and uh, used to be in the Air Force and, and got into uh, you know a world that has some pretty shady characters in it. Uh, and uh, having to navigate that world and see how it's uh, probably made her not trust anybody uh, and probably not really willing to, to thrust herself into a situation where she's going to put herself, uh, you know, at, at risk for others. Uh, and that's the change she goes through in this movie is you, you see her witness a situation that, that she actually uh, could have a, a real hand in, in doing some good. From the beginning, we really wanted to make something that was new enough and fresh enough that it could give people a reason to come back to the theater Uh, and also give kids a reason to hopefully go back and watch the original films. Um, The first trilogy had three characters who we loved, and then the sequels were about Owen and Claire, who hopefully we also care about. And now in the case of Dominion, we wanted to integrate them uh, and make the case that this was actually one long story from the very beginning. There you go. The thing that makes people love dinosaur movies in general is that we know they were real. You know, they're not aliens they're not monsters they were real animals all right i'm gonna skip over that we don't need to know about that yeah yes they were real um (laughs) but i like that he talked about you know making the case that this was one long story from the beginning kind of tying into what you were saying it's like let's go back to what happened at the very like pretty much the beginning of that movie and tie it into what's happening now uh i really like that so here's hoping that it like pays off in a, a satisfying way because the the Barbasol can is one of the most interesting concepts that we have. And it just got, you know, thrown under a piece of mud, you know, and, and we've never seen it since. Um, you know, it wasn't a, a game that's like not canon anymore. So who cares? But like, I want to know where it is now. So do you think we have, we have these rusted Barbasol cans, right? From Barbasol. Do you think they just ignore the cans for like 30 years and somebody finds it? Or is it like, we're going to have a flashback, it's going to go all Star Wars style, we're going to go back to the past in 1993, dig up this can? I think there's a, I think there's a definitely flashbacks in this film. What they're going to be, I don't know. I, the, the, the other question that I have is, is it possible to return to the island or no? I mean, we know that it, got exploded I mean, by volcano and all the dinosaurs are dead <laughs> but like if they're on a fact finding mission to figure something out uh clues on the island i mean i don't i i don't see how that's really useful but we know yeah. the barbasol can still exist because of what we saw in camp crustacea like right the, the trailer at least right so <laughs> yeah cretaceous by the way <laughs> whatever i've only seen season one and two all right, they stopped pumping them well, out. You're not so that far far behind. There's only three out, I think. So well, they pumped them out like every two months. Um, point is, do we return to uh, Nublar? 
Like, oh no, I'm well, sorry. Yeah. There's four. There's four seasons. My bad. I, so. I, I would yeah. wonder. I wonder that though. I don't know if we'll. I, I don't think we'll ever return there. I think they made a point that saying like, like, and a few of these probably some ones I won't play just yet. That they'll say like, we had to get off the island. We had to, now we're telling stories out in the world. And I'm like, okay, so I don't think you're going back there unless it's a flashback. So maybe that might be our only opportunity. But um, I, I'm just, this is the one, one of the most interesting things. I can't wait to see how it's used. But I also did like that he was talking about Kayla again, somebody who used to be in the Air Force, uh, you know, got into the shady world, doesn't trust anybody. Maybe we'll see that shift. Um, so I'm interested to hear. So let's move into that. That uh, We're going to talk to D- DeWanda Wise right now. Personally, I'm going to talk to her right now, and you can watch. So uh, let's play it. Let's roll roll the clip. Roll the clip of, of Kayla Watts here. Kayla is a contract pilot, um, and she often works for corporations like Biosyn. And sometimes she sells dinosaurs at the underground market, uh, which is primarily where we first meet her. We meet her initially on the tarmac, and then after that, Ooh. we meet her in her natural habitat, at the underground market. Selling dinosaurs, wow. I'm interested in the moral compass. I love this question of, you know, being a hero and this notion of uh, morality. Because I, I think, you know, at Kayla's heart, there are all these things that, these qualities, you know, integrity and honor and um, community that she was raised with. And absolutely, if you train in the military, you know, I was in like JROTC in high school. So if you train for any moment, you know, in any, any branch um, of the military, you know, there are, you're gonna come away, you're gonna walk away with um, <laughs> so many really beautiful and noble qualities. But part of what I really responded to um, in Kayla was that she isn't perfect at all. <laughs> That she, you kind of like. So this whole interview, I'm just watching this dinosaur on the side of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> so, Witness yes. her grow in her morality, and you you watch her grapple with her conscience. <laughs> I feel beyond honored to join this uh, franchise in particular. I think from inception, it's been diverse. From the very beginning, it's had great roles for women. Like, I nerd status went and read the books afterwards. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's probably, I don't know if there's a better fit for my, like, franchise debut. I'm calling it my franchise debut. I don't actually know if that's a thing, but it is now. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it has the kind of a incredibly long history and, <laughs> there's just so much more to explore in terms of our relationship, you know, the human relationship with uh, our environment, with uh, our call to take care of the earth. Well, uh, there we go. That was DeWanda Wise talking about working for companies like Biosyn. And a big thing that she revealed here was that she, you know, maybe in her spare time sells dinosaurs at an underground market. I'm like... Yo, I'm supposed to be rooting for this person, I thought. And then here she is going to sell some dinosaurs in an underground market. I'm like, uh, hmm. Hopefully she has a good turnaround here. I don't know. I think she's going to get thrust into a situation with uh, Claire and Owen. And Owen's going to do a lot of yelling. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've you got to help us. Like, you got to help us. You know, I know that you're, you don't trust me. You don't trust Biosyn. You don't trust the military. You don't trust, the, you know, you're, you, there's a lot of you got to see that we need your help. These dinosaurs are like they're they're real. They're they're animals. They have feelings too. You know, help, help us out. And then like Han Solo making that decision of shooting off Vader in the trench mm-hmm. run, you're gonna see that moment. And then the next thing you know, you're gonna root for her. And then she's just part of the squad automatically. It's yeah. It's, you know, it's, I, it's, I, I I didn't actually think about it. You know, I know uh, somebody mentioned uh, was it Bryce mentioned. Han Solo before, and you just brought him up again. It's like, yeah, it is pretty much the same kind of character. Somebody with a ship. Uh, this, you know, in this case, a, a, a cool looking plane that maybe gets crashed at some point um, and does some shady stuff. It's exactly that character, and that character comes around. So uh, I think this one will be fine. But um, 
franchise debut. I, I'm not looking into that too deeply. I think uh, that's mostly just like, well, she debu- she's debuting in this Jurassic franchise, not Star Wars or not Marvel. Yeah. Or it could be her saying like, Hey, this is the, the debut of me within this Jurassic franchise, and there's a lot more, which I do think might be true because there was a lot of rumors that like her and Mamadou Athi are going to be maybe continuing on in some form or fashion. So that'll be interesting to see. But I thought that was a pretty great uh, interview there that actually gave us quite a bit of information there. So um, I'm going to skip over a few here, and we're going to go to Laura Dern, who actually has some... <laughs> Some pretty valid information for us to hear as well. It's a big one. I met Colin Trevorrow and he sort of hinted something to me. Uh, And Steven Spielberg then called me more formally to ask, you know, how I would feel about the idea of Ellie Sattler returning along with a couple of her buddies. Um, And I was really excited by the idea. I think we all wanted her to return um, with a new sense of self and and have advanced as a character um, in her life and in her work. And so as they mined and uh, explored through the script what that would be, um, it became really exciting. It was important to Stephen and myself that Ellie was a feminist female action character in this large action movie. Um, Sadly, that was uh, not common um, when we made the film and has become, thank God, more and more common. Um, But we certainly want to honor that and bring it even more to the forefront with all the female characters in this film. And um, I think to see who Ellie is today, what it means for her to be um, divorced, having raised kids, single, independent, um, and frankly, living the Alan Grant life and and loving it, as she says in the film, is um, kind of a gorgeous starting place for this character. So when we were asked to do this, we assumed with the level of advancements in CGI, it would be amazing and digitally enhanced and, but we worried, you know, you would lose that proximity. Um, And thanks to Colin really wanting to go back to the feeling of the original film, to, to complete this story with that same tactile, incredible gift of the animatronics, He has John Nolan creating genius and magic with a team of extraordinary artists, painters, puppeteers, and you walk on set. (laughs) And uh, are either completely disgusted or in awe or both, um, or your mouth is agape and you're seeing something you can't believe is there. Um, And sometimes it's magical and so sweet, and sometimes it's your worst nightmare. Uh, But they make all of it come alive. I was muted. That's great. Uh, (laughs) um, We had Laura Dern there talking about being divorced, single, and independent, right? That's big news. That's huge. So yeah. last time we saw her it was in Jurassic Park 3. And, you know, she was married and had uh, two kids. Yeah, I think two kids. There was a baby, and then there was Charlie. Um, and there was Mark Degler, her husband, who, you know, had some ties to something, government agency or whatever it was, and helped them get off the island. Um, divorced. That's the status going into this movie. I didn't expect it to be revealed here, but here we are. <laughs> I think it's quite obvious that 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 uh, Alan and, and Ellie end up together. I think that's the fan favorite moment that everybody's wanted since 1993. That happens <sighs> at the end of the movie. I think it's. I think it's. You can sign, seal, and deliver that. I think. I, I, I think it's almost. Yeah. It's almost uh, too easy. It's going to be a cheer moment. You know, it's one of those moments where people clap in the theater. 
you know, I'm coming around to the idea. At first, I was just like really, I'm I'm furious because like in in Jurassic Park three, like I expected them to be together and to be a couple, and then then they throw us a curveball. And in that theater in in 2001, I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. This is not his family. This is not his life. Grant's life. It's Mark Degler's. Like, oh, come on. So to find out that you know she's divorced, and maybe maybe you're right. Maybe they do come back together here in the end. It, it could very well seem. Um, that's big news, and I'm coming around to the idea. I'm coming around to it. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. But um, that's big. That's big. Uh, let's yeah. move on to, to the last one here that I have from Mamadou Athi, and uh, it's a brand new character that is going to be playing here in the franchise. So let's take a listen. Ramsey's job is the head of communications. Um, that apparently covers a wide array of responsibilities at Bison. Um, but yeah, that's his uh, title officially. But he's also being groomed by um, Campbell Scott's character, Dodgson, Lewis Dodgson, who was in the first film. Um, he's being groomed as like kind of his second in command. So um, I think that's where kind of a lot of his like kind of tentacles get spread around a bit. Hmm. Second I grew command. up with this and these characters, and it was just kind of cool to be in like this, like enclosed space with Alan Grant and Alex Sattler. You know, it was it was awesome, and they were so cool. So I, I had a really great first day. Very very surreal. Colin is fascinating because he knows so much about the camera as well as like just talking with actors, and he can flip between those two. And not to say the other directors I have. I've worked with haven't but like I've never done a movie like this and a lot of this kind of movie has a lot to do with like camera and like just <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain but there's so many different moving pieces in this kind of movie and then for him to have like the bandwidth to like really talk like this actor language after setting up all these shots and like the animatronic stuff and dealing with all that stuff is kind of like uh, wizard like. I think, and and yeah, he's a great guy. He's the greatest guy. I mean, you can't just have a three-hour conversation first meeting someone and not like enjoy it. You know, he's I I, I really like, I just like the guy a lot. Like I love him. He's he's awesome, <laughs> and it's been um, and I've gotten to learn uh, quite a bit about the camera talking with him and and John Schwartzman and and the camera team as well. So it's yeah, you you really couldn't ask for a better actor director working relationship is at least as far as i'm concerned <laughs> but yeah it's it's been kind of a dream he's the man okay all right so um like i said there's there's a bunch more we've got pat crowley sam neal uh jeff goldblum isabella sermon frank marshall uh and chris pratt uh we've got all those i'll play them all later at some point but um that's that's pretty cool that he's going to be the second in command, uh, kind of taking over what seem seemingly is the role of like a Howard King from the novels. Howard King was like his second in command, um, and that that's interesting. I hope I hope he's got a good uh, storyline here, and I hope he has a you know a good outcome here. Um, maybe unlike Howard King, um, but uh, I'm interested to see what this character does. Uh, is does this have any interest to you, like learning learning more about Biosyn and what their you know, wide array of responsibilities may be for somebody like, uh, you know, uh, Ramsey. Yeah. I think he, both his, his him and Kayla are going to be, uh, in a series of like, everyone's gonna have to make a choice in this movie because you're going to have Biosyn in charge of rounding up these dinosaurs, but they're going to be doing shady stuff. So they're not going to be doing like clean one for one work. Like hey, you're supposed to clean up the dinosaurs. They're not, they're going to do that, but then they're going to do it for profit or whatever. They're going to be they're going to be in with the 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 black market. You know, something's not going to be right with them. And basically, Dodson's going to tell Ramsey to like you, you know, put a good face on this. You're the you're the face of the company. Uh, and then I think he's going to start to slowly realize that things aren't right. And then he's going to have a choice, just like Kayla's going to have a choice. You're going to you're going to have like the rebels, which is. Owen and Claire and, <laughs> and Ellie and uh, Ian Malcolm. And then you're going to have the Empire, which is Biosyn, and everyone's going to have to make a choice at some point. And whatever, however this movie ends, you're going to have one side that, have, that has lost 
that, you know, cause I think a lot of people are, are like, how do you have a storyline? Cause I've been so confused by this. How do you have a storyline? Dinosaurs are now roaming the earth. You can't really round them all up. You can't really shoot them all. You can't like, what do you, what do you do? You, you know, and Ian Malcolm keeps saying you can't live with them. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, what do they do? And the good guys are obviously going to be our heroes. The bad guys are going to be Biosyn. And I think Ramsey is important because he's going to be, I think at the last minute he's going to either, he's going to reveal to the public, like what actually is going on with Biosyn mm. so that, that, that like he's the whistleblower and then it costs yeah. him his job and then, then he has nowhere to turn, but he turns around and then there's a group of eight randos that have saved the world. And they're <laughs> like, oh, I guess I'll join you guys. And now you have the future of the franchise in Maisie, Kayla, uh, and Ramsey and, and Owen and Claire and the big three just kind of float off into the sunset. Um, and maybe that's the setup, but like, I, I feel like he's going to have a choice to make and he's going to be important. And the whole movie, you're going to be watching him kind of like go out and do press conferences, and be like, no, no, everything's fine. We're, we're working with the governments. And then he, he, something is revealed in Dodgson's office and he's like, wait, what are you doing? And then he starts to crack. And then eventually he, he does, yeah. he makes the choice. So. I like that. I think you're onto something. I, de- I definitely think that's going to be the case. He's going to see it all unravel. Maybe he'll see like you know, Dodson do some really, really unethical thing and like attempt to murder somebody or something like that. Um, I could definitely see that being a thing. But, uh, you know, what's interesting is a lot of the other voice messages or uh, interviews here uh, do talk about Colin a lot. And Mamadou Athi there talked about Colin. And, you know, I've been saying this for a while that I feel like this movie has to be good, right? It has to be good after getting dropped from star wars with uh duel of the fates and you know what he would have made there um i feel like this is the comeback right this is the comeback tour you have to make something to show the entire world who kind of laughed at him for getting thrown off of that movie after making uh the book of henry or whatever and and uh i think he needs a big comeback here and everybody's talking really really highly of him here so do you think that's going to be true of colin yeah, I, I I always think that he should have never been uh, no let go from Star Wars. I was disappointed when he was. I think mm-hmm. the first two, and I know he didn't direct the second one, but I think the first two Jurassic World movies were like perfect. Like, I don't I don't really have any issue with either of them at all. Uh, I think he has been able to do movies this big, and I think everything they say. Like at first, I thought I was listening to. I didn't realize Laura Dern was in the Force Awakens after listening to part of that interview. Uh, talking about like real dinosaurs. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I just think that he, yeah, you're right. He did. He learned a lot because it's one thing to do Jurassic world. One of the biggest movies of all time, pretty critically liked. It wasn't like there wasn't, no one really has a huge problem with Jurassic world. And then book of Henry doesn't go well publicly get, you know, let go from the biggest franchise of all time. And then now you're ending this one. I, I think he takes all the lessons he learned he, you know, Spielberg's obviously clearly involved. He called Laura Dern. That was a nice little reveal in there mm-hmm. to talk about coming back. Uh, so he's got that sort of guardian angel still over his shoulder, um, you yeah. know, just in case you know, as a nice fail safe. So I think, and I think he's passionate, like everything, everybody's passionate about star Wars. I'm sure he was too, but like, he, I feel like he's really passionate about this franchise. You hear about his involvement in the animated series that I won't attempt to say wrong again. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> Don't he, he, just feels like, he feels like he's the steward and the shepherd over this franchise. So when you care that much about it and everyone says good things about you to me, that, that, uh, that's only going to be good. So I think, I think he's learned his lessons and I think he's going to land the plane as, as well as he possibly can. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think I think you're on the something there. So let's end it there. We've got a lot more to listen to here. Like I said, there's nothing too, too imperative to talk about. The You know, Pat Crowley's talking about got to get off the island. Sam Neill, uh, again, a love fest for Colin. Uh, Jeff Goldblum literally just rambles for like f- five minutes about Laura Dern and Sam Neill and Colin. Um uh, and and yeah, so there's a there's a few others in there too. Chris Pratt actually got very existential here, so you gotta you gotta check it check out that one as well. Um, but thank you, Ryan, for joining me here uh, on the Jurassic Park podcast. Uh, what do you what do you got going on? Do you, you doing anything? This is coming out this week, so you got anything going on? Oh, we got a lot of stuff going on. We've got uh, preparing for Star Wars Celebration in two weeks. Preparing for uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. So. 
Star Wars is about to hit, you know, we had a nice little break for a couple of, I say break as if like series hasn't come and go in the middle of this break, but you know, <laughs> we're still nowhere near the level of Marvel where it's like movie series, movie series, movies, two movie series. Uh, but Star Wars is about to hit that. And I don't think people really understand that because you got Kenobi and then Andor and then Mandalorian season three and then Ahsoka and then possibly a movie in 2023 Ugh. and then bad batch season two. So for the first time ever, star Wars is literally not going to have a break and there might be multiple things hitting at once. So yeah, you check out the force cast. If you're into star Wars ForceCast.net is our website. That'll take you everywhere you need to go. And you'll hear Brad a lot. Brad's kind of like a pseudo co-host at least, at least once <laughs> a month. it will show up somehow and we'll talk about, talk about star Wars, but yeah, no, thanks for having me. Like I said, Jurassic is my, uh, is my, you know, even more than Marvel for me, it's I'm a, I'm the most hardcore casual fan you can get where I love all the stuff. I love the energy of the Jurassic fandom. I really do. I mean, if you guys are listening to this, you know, Star Wars fandom is just a straight dumpster fire, normally 24-7, uh, and we're spoiled. And, and this franchise, I, I like coming over here where it's like, we don't get a buffet. We just get a regular dinner, uh, a regular entree, and we're happy that we have it. So I'm yeah. uh, 100%, 100%, uh, you know big on jurassic well that's awesome and, and thank you so much for uh you know giving me like a guest spot you know from time to time whenever the you know, chance arises on the force cast that's been awesome it's been fun to be a part of that so yeah here's the more i'm sure we've got more to talk about in the future ha- hashtag so, where is where is justice where is justice <laughs> smith where is yeah where where's where justice is- smith and daniela pineda w- what's going on why the cast. I love them in Fallen Kingdom. Where are they? Why haven't they said... No one said a word. They pretend like they're not in the movie. Like, did they get cut? I I have a feeling they're going to be the Vince Vaughn of this movie. And they're just going to show up. They're going to show up with a big set of uh, cutters and maybe just let some dinosaurs loose in the wild again. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Where's hashtag... Start it now. If you're listening, it's hashtag where's... (laughs) Where's Justice? Where's Justice?